So, besides this computational heterogeneity, there is also this uh, objective inconsistency problem that we had a glimpse of in the last lecture, right? Where we had two different uh, two different functions or two different clients optimizing their own function. So, there is something called objective inconsistency problem. As I said, let us say there, I mean, we have just two clients. So, consider the setup. So, we have two clients. So, it is the same example that we looked at in the last class. And their local objective function are for the first client f1 x is x minus 1 whole square and f2 x is 2 times x minus 5 whole square. So, these are local objective functions. Okay. And because I mean these are deterministic functions, so the global objective function I mean it is not data driven thing. So, it would simply be 0.5 of f1 x plus 0 0.5 of f2 x. You can just consider p i is to be 0 0.5, 0 0.5 right. Okay. So, f of x turns out to be half. So, this is your global objective function. So, f of x turns out to be half x minus 1 whole square plus x minus 5 whole square. And what is x star that minimizes f of x? 11 by 3, right? So, x star is going to be 11 by 3. The x star is the optimal for this capital f like the global objective function, ok. All right. So, one thing that we looked at was suppose there are, there are too many local updates at both the like at both the client ends. So, then f 1 x the first client would send a value 1, the second client would send the value 5 because these are individual like uh, optimal solutions or the optimizers for the uh, local objective functions right. And if I take the average of those that is going to be 3 which is going to be different from 11 over 3. So, there is this objective inconsistency problem right. So, how do the step sizes uh, or uh, let us say the number of local updates the they affect this particular uh, like they have this uh, I mean this they essentially uh, result in this kind of inconsistency and we are going to quantify that for this particular example ok. So, let us see uh, how each step of uh, this particular thing looks like uh, in the context of this particular example. So, we have the two agents. So, what would be the so, we are going to be assuming that each, each agent runs tau i number of like tau 1 and tau 2 number of local updates. So, for agent 1, what is, what does this look like? So, what would be the output, what would, what would be the equation like update rule or update equation? It would be the gradient x t j minus step size times the gradient of f 1 of f 1 x and the gradient is 2 times x minus 1. So, minus y so ok is this clear. So, I can also write this as x t j plus 1 1. So, I am subtracting the optimal which is x in this case x 1 star is essentially 1 right is going to be uh, 1 minus t the ok. Just subtracting minus 1 from it, this is what it, it would uh, look like. Because the reason I wanted to do this was because this is the x star, the optimal for the first agent right, is 1 minus 2 eta of x t j 
1 minus x star open and this implies if I run this for tau i number of updates. So, x t tau 1 minus x star of 1 this would be 1 minus 2 eta raised to the tau 1 x t 0 1 minus x star ok. So, this is by the way this x t 0 1 is the same as the 1 that is communicated by the central server at the beginning of the t, uh, tth round right tth communication round. So, we can also write this as the same as writing simply x t because every agent is going to get at at the 0th round or basically 0th update every agent will have this thing. So, this is nothing but x t. So, effectively what what we have here is x t tau 1 1 minus x star 1 is 1 minus 2 times this is for the first agent first client ok. So, let us see what if we repeat the same step. So, this is for the first client let us see what happens when we do the similar uh, process for this or similar analysis for the second client. So, for the second client x t j plus 1 2 is equal to x t j 2 minus. Now, what is the derivative of uh, 4 times this thing? The gradient is essentially 4 times x minus 5. So, it will be minus 4 eta x t j 2 minus 5 ok. And again if I subtract, so here x x star 2 would be 5 right. So, if I subtract x star 2 this is 1 minus 4 times eta x t j 2 minus x star 2. And using a similar analysis you can show that x t tau 2 if you have tau 2 number of updates minus x star 2 this is 1 minus 4 times eta raised to the power tau 2 times x t minus x star 2. this is your second client. ok. Everyone with me on this so far? So, what what is now x t plus 1 which is basically the update from the central server. So, it is going to be receiving uh, x t tau 1 and x t tau 2 from the two clients and then we will basically take 0 0.5 0 0.5 of both and then essentially uh, form the x t plus 1 right. So, so what happens at, so at the central server this is a server update essentially. So, we are looking at what the server update looks like and this would be x t plus 1 is essentially 0 0.5 of x t tau 1 1 plus 0 0.5 of x t tau 2 ok right because it is as I said it is not data driven thing. So, you are allocate equal sort of I mean it is a deterministic function. So, basically you have 50 50 percent weightage on both the clients and this is what x t plus 1 would look like for the uh, at the server side right which is going to be. So, we if I use this particular thing. So, x t tau 2 essentially is x star t x star 2 plus this term likewise x t tau 1 is uh, x star 1 plus this particular term right. So, if I take half and uh, half 0.5 0.5 of this. So, it is it is essentially x star 1 1 plus x star 2 by 2. 
okay plus and then you have additional terms right and the additional terms are I just want to make sure I don't make so these 1 minus 2 times theta Okay. Now we are trying to characterize the solution. So this is xt plus 1 in terms of xt, right? So this is your xt plus 1 is specified in terms of xt and we are now trying to characterize the solutions of this particular equation. Okay. So this is your, uh, this is your update at the server side and for the server side to converge to some x, let us say x bar or something x tilde. So, what would happen? Let us say, so let us analyze solutions with this. So, if the x, let us say x, uh, the, at the server side this has converged to some x tilde, so that means xt plus 1 is same as xt as x tilde, right? So, this is saying that here yeah, some x tilde is equal to x star 1 plus x star 2 by 2 plus 1 minus 2 eta tau 1 by 2 x tilde minus 1 minus 2 eta tau 1 by 2 x star 1 plus 1 minus 4 eta tau 2 by 2 x tilde. star okay and this essentially if you recollect we basically collect all the terms on the left hand side this turns out to be 1 minus Get this whole thing divided by one minus uh, one minus okay. This is this is what the solution looks like. X tilde. I mean, ideally, you would want the solution to converge to. Uh, so you would want to choose your tau 1 and tau 2 and your learning rates so that this solution converges to your 11 by 3, right? But let us see uh, what happens. So if you look at this particular solution and if you apply L'Hopital's rule and in consider the limit when eta goes to 0. So limit eta goes to 0, your x tilde basically turns, so you can show that this turns out to be tau 1 x star 1 plus 2 tau 2 star 2 divided by tau 1 plus 2 tau 2. So, you would have to apply the L'Hopital rule uh, when once you make, once you take eta goes, uh, eta very small, apply the L'Hopital rule and this is what you would get in terms of the solution. And you can see if tau 1 is equal to tau 2 here. The solution that you get is 11 by 3, right? And which is what you want. But if you let us say fix these total number of local updates, or if you choose tau 1 and tau 2 slightly differently, you would get an, an entirely different solution. Okay, so this is this is the this is called the objective inconsistency uh, problem. So essentially, you are trying to optimize a function global objective function which is uh, 0.5 of f1x and plus 0.5 of f2x, but because of the uh, number of local updates that you are making at each client, you may be getting uh, like a different answer right, than what you expect. So, so, depending on the 
number of local updates tau 1 and tau 2 this can be arbitrarily different from the intended global memory intended okay so again uh, you can see that the number of local updates plays a significant role in terms of what uh, solution you converge to right and so how do you account for this in typical fed averaging so how do you make sure that there is no objective inconsistency so maybe you would have to choose a different weighting scheme instead of making 0 0.5 0 0.5 some like depending on something depending on the number of local updates or something else you would have to choose a different weighting scheme so that you do not uh, basically you end up converging to the intended global minimum okay so we were looking at the global uh, or the objective inconsistency problem right so in uh, typical fed averaging so in fed averaging so what is the intended objective function f of x it is summation uh, so there are m clients i1 through m so this is what we want to uh, minimize right so this is this is your uh, global objective function function to be minimized but uh, as you as you saw in the previous example depending on the values of local updates and also i mean that example was about deterministic uh, optimization but if you have let's say stochastic optimization with n1 n2 and so on and data points like these the actual the real objective function that uh, the fed averaging algorithm optimizes based on these parameter values so in fact it turns out that the mismatched objective objective function that the algorithm ends up minimizing let me call this uh, f tilde of x so this turns out to be 1 through n n i tau i so i prime 1 through m n i prime tau i prime okay. So instead of minimizing this intended ob global objective function, the Fed, uh, uh, like if you run the Fed averaging algorithm with tau i number of local updates, each client having n i number of data points. So this is what it ends up minimizing. And you can see that if I choose tau i to be the same, the number of local updates to be the same, then this is the same. I mean, essentially, the mismatch object objective matches your intended objective. But the moment you start having the same number of local updates, slow clients would take more time and so on, right? So, so there are other issues with that. But this is this. I mean, you can really see that the mismatch objective. Uh, I mean, this is this is the objective that is getting optimized here. Uh, 